Hey guys, this is Anime Ball Z here, and today we are going to be doing the third part of What If Goku Was Born With God Key. I intend for a video to come out today, hopefully, and today should be Sunday, but if not, it will be coming out on Wednesday. I've been going really hard with this What If, I've already scripted about 19,000 words, I'm being really productive with it, and I really think I can get this What If finished in a good amount of time. Please like the video to help with the video's algorithm and like the previous parts of this what if. And also subscribe and turn on notifications to get notified when the future parts of this what if get uploaded. There's nothing much else I want to say in the intro, so without further ado, let's get into the video. When it's time, all the time, ooh, yeah. Look at the way that I move, swear. Disrespectful and I'm rude, okay? I had cocaine in the school. Uh while Whis is currently watching the event at hand, across from the battlefield, Trunks just stands on some rocks and watches everything from above. It completely startles him as his universe didn't have any kind of power like he has just seen. He knows that King Cold is far below the level of the androids, but Goku's power is impressive. This Saiyan then flies down to the group. Once Goku detects his power, he transforms into a Super Saiyan God form and awaits his arrival for battle. However, Trunks immediately signals that he is no threat and Goku just returns to his base form. Hello Goku, I'm Trunks from the future, where's dad? He asks, unable to find Vegeta in the crowd. Who's your dad? Wait, you said you're from the future? Goku asks, very confused. Yes, I'm Trunks, son of Vegeta, he replies. Well, you do look a lot like someone I know on this planet. What a coincidence, Goku says, thinking of Bulma. Yes, Bulma, she's my mother, he replies, shocking Goku entirely. What do you mean Vegeta and Bulma will have a child, he replies. I don't think so. There's something different with this timeline. No one in my timeline was capable of the forms that you've used just now. Anyway, that's not the point. In three years, powerful androids will be coming to destroy the Earth, even if you are likely weaker than them now, Trunks replies. Shocking Goku. I'm weaker than them? That means everyone has to train their hardest just to survive, Goku thinks, clenching his fist as he is hyped by the future battles. The rest of the group get told about this training that they have to do and before they start someone arrives. The Saiyan pod shoots through the sky and Goku transforms again, awaiting its landing. The person that is revealed from this pod is none other than Vegeta with a cool red robe. Vegeta? King Vegeta to be exact, he replies, with his arms held outward. So you took over Frieza's empire, Goku replies, clenching his fists in anger. Of course, I had to choose between emperor and king but chose king of course, he says, then dropping his arms. I am here to battle and ultimately slay you, Kakarot. I will return all of the anger you have caused me back to you, Vegeta declares, ripping off his red robe. Allow me to show you this new form that I have attained, he shouts, beginning to power up as much as he can. Golden streaks of ki appear in his aura until his head becomes almost blonde. His power increases 50 fold and reaches 50 million from its previous 1 million. Goku, not phased by the power ahead of him, plays defensive since he doesn't want to hurt Vegeta that much. Vegeta flies at him with a smile on his face and kicks Goku in his stomach, following with way more punches to the body. Goku, unsurprisingly, just tanks all of them and powers up into a Super Saiyan Blue form, making him much stronger. Goku lands one kick on Vegeta, then a swivel kick to knock him out. His body just flops to the ground and Bulma decides to take him in and heal him, under Goku's supervision. So, they begin to do their training. Swiftly, three years of strenuous effort passes and everyone has become much, much stronger. Yamcha has a power level of 15,000, with Krillin having a power level of 80,000. Tien still lags behind Krillin with a power level of 70,000, as Krillin receives some training directly from King Kai himself, so right now he is capable of Kaioken times 10 at the highest. I decided to give him this level of Kaioken since Goku was able to use Kaioken times 10 when he had approximately the same power level, a bit higher at 90,000. To give some reference to what I'm talking about, this is the time when Goku was facing Ginyu. Piccolo has trained mostly in solitude, but has still managed to amass a power level of 140,000. After also training with King Kai, he is capable of Kaioken times 15. The young Gohan has a power level of 200,000, and Goku's power level has skyrocketed to 500,000. Once Vegeta was healed by Bulma, he heard of these androids and vowed that he'd kill them himself. His power level has reached 5 million off the abuse of his Zenkais and healing pods. As Vegeta is training, Nappa has taken over as the temporary king of the new Saiyan Empire, as they call it. His power level is 250,000. These androids are revealed and these two are Android 19 and 20. They wreak havoc on the city of Sasebo, but their energies cannot be sensed by the Z Fighters. They simply watch over the fighting from above and feel a little confused about what's actually going on. So these mechanical androids can't have sense key. This is weird, Cien wonders, looking down with his three eyes. 
Yeah, let's go and get them, Krillin says, nose diving into the city with confidence. Goku powers up into his godly form, which is Super Saiyan God, by just calmly closing his eyes and releasing his god key. In a short amount of time, he is able to locate the androids and they aren't too phased by him. 19, get him, he orders, pointing his finger at the Saiyan. Unluckily, the Super Saiyan God form was unable to be completely analysed by Dr. Jerome. The godly power that he released couldn't be sensed by his senses and therefore couldn't even be analysed. This means that Present Cell isn't provided the extremely powerful increase in strength from God Key. However, he is still given the Saiyan DNA that can turn Super Saiyan. While we're not exactly sure if Perfect Cell can turn Super Saiyan, but he did get a golden aura of Super Perfect Cell. Anyway, 19 punches the ultra strong Saiyan, but he doesn't move and stands firm like a statue. This force all bounces back into 19, who falls away slightly, but of course feels no pain from the strike. The android isn't surprised by Goku's form, as he has been informed about it from the constant surveillance of this form. However, this doesn't mean that he is strong enough to combat it in any way. Goku punches his android once and flails both hands forward, launching a very wide energy wave that even catches part of Dr. Jiro's body. Part of his clothing scorches off and so does some parts of his body, but no vital components or organs are affected. This Saiyan, the android was reduced to ashes in two attacks. I'm not sure if I can handle them, I need to activate 17 and 18, he reduces, turning to fly off. However, he is met by Piccolo and Krillin both flying in front of him. After the training with King Kai, Krillin and Piccolo became a little close and I'd say the closest person to Piccolo besides Goku would be Krillin. Their use of Kaioken also brings them together as a battle duo, a dynamic duo if you will. Dr. Jiro still far surpasses them though. Piccolo starts using Kaioken times 15 and Krillin times 10. They charge the mad scientists in their red auras and both attack him simultaneously. In the end, Dr. Jiro punches Krillin and almost kills him with this one hit, then spin kicks the Namekian in his stomach. Goku then catches no of this, but before he can catch him, Dr. Jiro has made his exit. Goku isn't easily able to track the scientist down as he gives off no key, but his immense speed allows him to track him down in due time. Dr. Jiro, after just activating 17 and 18, sees Goku coming from the red star in the sky. He chucks in a key blast as he approaches the lab and actually causes masses of destruction. The only people left of the capsule of Android 16 are heavily injured Jiro and the two androids. So these are the androids. I sense no power from them either, Goku thinks, watching them intently. You're Goku. As we expected, let's get him sis, Android 17 shouts, flying towards him. As they approach, Goku is able to push them back by just his transformation that allows them to transform into Super Saiyan Blue. 17 still goes in for the first attack when he can, but Goku dodges, swiftly ducking under to follow with a back kick to the stomach. 18 follows after a brother and throws a fair share of strikes towards him. He is also able to swerve and swivel around these attacks with ease. The conflict continues and they try and try to hit him, but he doesn't let up. However, he's only thrown one attack so far and has played ultra defensive. The other Z fighters seeing this fight are astonished with the Saiyan's power, being able to handle these branded world level threats with ease. Trunks is also bewildered and wonders what went wrong in his world if Goku was this strong. Goku, seeing that this is getting dragged on way too long, decides to switch his tactic to a more aggressive fighting style. Waiting for 17 to approach him again, he throws two powerful punches before landing a destructive swinging kick that launches him into the air. As he is flipping and flailing around in the air, he darts towards him and leaves a straight blue trail as he soars through the sky. His movements make him look like some type of bullet as the fighters are unable to track him. Goku then comes very close to 17 to release his signature Kamehameha wave. He launches this blue wave of energy that effectively destroys the android into just one big cloud of metallic debris and human flesh. Beside this, 18 is stricken with fear. Goku, seeing that she might not retaliate, decides to fly right in front of her to try and change her ways. I don't have to kill you, just stop being a threat to everyone and live your life like the human you can be, he replies. You're not even human, she replies coldly, starting to tear up from the sight of her dead brother. No, not by blood, but by lifestyle most definitely. I don't like to kill, I hate it, Goku says, making Android 18 confused. You killed King Piccolo, you killed my brother, you killed everyone at the Red Ribbon, Android 18 replies with a crackling voice. Because I had to. They were all too much of a threat to humanity and those that I love. You, I can see that you aren't like them. Also, your brother can easily be revived with Kami's Dragon Balls, he explains, trying to make 18 calmer. Dr. Jiro then starts to see the faulty wiring of commanding them to kill Goku. 17 was doing as he intended, but his sister, she certainly isn't following orders. With the self-destruct button in hand, he nods to himself to almost confirm to himself to destroy it. 
However, he feels that it's one of his greatest creations and feels annoyed doing so, but logically he knows what he must do. Going to click the button, he then gets attacked by a certain someone. This person is King Vegeta. You seem strong, you have to face me, the ultimate Saiyan warrior, he shouts, beginning to transform into his new and ultra powerful form. His base power level has skyrocketed from 1 million to 5 million to then 15 million from abusing his power. He has also unlocked the next stage of Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan 2. This can give him a power level of 1.5 billion, which is way higher than even Super Saiyan Namek Saga Goku. Now this will probably be my last use of power levels since they start to be pretty much impossible to use after this point. I would guess that he is stronger than Dr. Jiro with a power level of this, but then again we just don't know. I will just assume so this one time and see the usage of power levels as we carry on into the story. King Vegeta, the one that almost got killed by Goku on numerous occasions, his power has jumped dramatically in such a short amount of time, he claims, beginning to back away from him. Where are you going? I heard about a certain event taking place today about three years ago and decided that I'd chime in. Let's go, he shouts, flying right at Dr. Jiro to land the first blow of the fight. They continue to trade blows for a time and currently seem equally matched, however Vegeta is receiving less damage from each hit than Dr. Jiro is. Vegeta punches the android in the chest but then he flies behind him to kick him into the ground and to finish off with a full power energy wave. Last second Vegeta is able to swerve right past this attack and fly into the air as fast as he possibly can, dodging the attack entirely. It seems that he has far more power and technique but as for his opponent he has the edge in terms of overall speed including battle speed and stamina. This hunk of junk isn't half bad, I'll have to go my absolute hardest Vegeta shouts, thrilled from the fight. You can see here that his ego has become slightly more resistant to blows to his strength and power. This is due to him being constantly exposed to people with way higher power than his own. For example, Freezer far surpassed his previous level of power and Goku has been miles ahead of him for years now. He is lucky that Goku has no interest in running an empire because if not his position would have been taken away long ago. Vegeta launches his garlic gun promptly and instinctively Dr. Jiro catches it with one hand and is pushed away with every push from Vegeta. The blast slowly starts to push past his fingers and resembles a bowl shape as his hand struggles to push the entire blast away. Swiftly, Jiro tries to retaliate by launching an energy wave with his free arm, only for the blast to be vaporised almost instantly. This sin is too strong for me, I need to make an escape. Maybe even activate Android 16 right now, he wonders, thinking between various different strategies as he holds the blast away from eating apart his cyborg body. In one swift motion he pushes the blast downwards, therefore lifting him up and makes a run for it. He flies as fast as he possibly can go and first tries to secure distance between him and the enemy. Luckily he possesses superior speed and is actually able to do so, also surpassing the Saiyan in agility. This allows him to make a quick turnaround to return to his lab. His android is incomplete though. Whatever, I must do this, he shouts, reluctantly slamming the button to activate Android 16. The incomplete android raises and is met by Vegeta, who kills Dr. Jiro right in front of him. You seem like a better challenge for me. Let's go, redhead, Vegeta shouts, powering up once again. Android 16, who is superior to Imperfect Cell, is certainly a problem for the likes of Vegeta. Again, it's tough to give an exact number for Vegeta, but I'd say again he'd be a contender for Imperfect Cell. Both fighters clash punches and with the super high force, the entire lab is crushed and destroyed. So the rocks don't crush him, Vegeta roars and destroys him with his aura alone. Once again, the two fighters clash and throw their fair share of strikes and fist blows. This time, 16 overpowers him in power by a large margin, but Vegeta is also superior in terms of battle speed and certainly agility. Android 16 zooms forward for a punch, but Vegeta's sausage flips over it while in midair. He lands a kick to the chest and a close of key blast to the head, disorienting him. However, his mechanical eyes return right back to ordinary vision after this attack and he is even able to grab Vegeta through the smoke. His windpipe becomes crushed and shut by this grasp and he struggles to be released from it. Soon his vision starts to fade and just as he is able to get a good release on his hand, 16 starts using two hands. The squeeze feels like an anvil has been dropped on his neck and in due time he falls unconscious and reverts to his base form. Across from them, Goku is there trying to return 18 to an ordinary mental state, however it isn't going very well and she's still trying to kill him. Come on, you know you can't kill me, Goku says, insisting that she stands down and returns to a good path. Never. You kill my brother and for that you shall pay with your life, she says, finishing with a front kick that actually launches Goku quite a bit. This is only because Goku allows this though. Just fight back already, 18 shouts, diving down towards Goku to throw a bunch of attacks and then to launch an energy wave. Goku is just stood behind her the entire time, unable to deal with her rage and grief. 
Your brother could just be wished back with the Dragon Balls. I'm sorry for killing him, but if he is still a threat to my friends, I will be forced to subdue him again, he states, making 18 just a little bit happier. Just do that then, she shouts, flying off into the distance. Goku then feels the presence of someone behind him. Coming to kill him, swiftly he kicks such a person back and turns to see that it's actually Android 16. Who are you? You're another android? You don't have to do this either, Goku says, holding his palm out to try and calm him. My job is to go Goku. You are Goku. I cannot be calm until you are dead, he says monotonously, with no body movement whatsoever. This guy's overkill, Goku thinks, looking at his intimidating figure. Since he can't sense anyone's key, he is unable to tell if the person is strong or weak. Judging from his figure and lack of emotion, he assumes that he is stronger than 17 and 18, and he is right to assume so. He hopes for a hard battle, but is quickly disappointed as he realises that Android 16 is still far inferior to him. Several punches come for him, but he is able to swerve past them with sheer elegance and swiftness. He isn't even touched a majority of the fight and is able to parry any attack that comes his way too. Android 16, though, doesn't show any sign of annoyance or irritation as he misses the attacks. This makes Goku think that he's holding back, which he isn't really. However, he still has a very powerful trump card, his explosions. The android swiftly rips his arms off, briefly shocking Goku. Once the arms fall, though, he becomes even more shocked as the holes across his arms start to glow a hot orange. Then, several explosions fire off towards him and have far more power than Android 16 could ever output before. They sound like nuclear bombs every time a bomb is released, and they continue to be fired off as if it's some assault rifle. Goku just flies and swerves past every explosion, but he has to cover rather large distances to do so. The entire battlefield is also covered with the exploding and fiery lights of 16's deadly explosions. So that will conclude the third part of What If Goku Was Born With God Key. Please tell me something you liked about the video, or something that I should improve on for the next part. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.